Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to that very specific video about the One Identity On Demand service. What I really like to show you during the next minutes is how you can get access to our On Demand products and, of course, how to use them. Therefore, we have split the video into two parts. There is, on the one hand side, a very short demo with a little bit theoretically content about the On Demand product so that you can get an idea about the process and after that, I will show you with Safeguard as an example how to get such an on-demand product. The whole thing is important, especially because we just reviewed the complete process, how to get access to our on-demand services. And this, at the end, will be your benefit because it is now pretty easy and, of course, fast to do. And now, please just follow me to the screen and we will talk about the on-demand services. First question is, what is an on-demand product? An on-demand product is one out of a selection of four One Identity products which are cloud hosted. That means you get the same feature set than for the on-prem product, but the complete maintenance, that means installation of the product and maintenance of the services, are in the hand of One Identity because it is a cloud hosted environment. All the other stuff, that means the configuration about the servers and to put the data in and to work with the data, that remains at the customer side. That means you are fully responsible for your product and the on-demand product acts as an extension of your on-prem installation. With that, it is of course a cloud service completely without compromise. Next question to answer which products are available and how to access them. To access them is easy to answer because there is just one URL. You have to navigate to cloud.oneidentity.com. Once you are there, you can select out of four products. There is the Identity Manager on demand, there is Safeguard on demand, there is Active Roles on demand, and there is Password Manager on demand. More products might follow. Next question to answer is how to subscribe to these services. And that is easy again. On that mentioned web page, in the first step, you have just to register yourself at One Identity Cloud Services. Once that is done, you can scroll down just to the on-demand services, select the trial you like to work with and click on trial just to configure the service. But now in particular, what's to do? After you click that trial button, you can just enter your contact information. That is necessary because one identity need to know who needs the service. Secondly, you have to select one out of two data centers. There is a data center in the United States and another data center in Europe. Depending on where you are, you can select the data center where the environment gets hosted for you. And then in a third step, it is necessary to subscribe to a specific distribution list. This is a distribution list that notifies admin about outages or new features, releases or such. This is necessary so that you know what happens with the environment and the cloud hosting at all. In the very last step, you have then to configure your access point. This is different from product to product, but you have to select between RDP and IPsec VPN. Depending on what's selected, which is depending on the product, of course, you have then to enter some more information. And now let's talk about the connection types. As we have heard, two available, one is VPN and one is RDP. VPN, of course, exists for safeguard, it exists for the active roles and the password manager. And the reason is that these tools are acting as an extension of your on-prem network. That means you have to extend your local network just with the help of a VPN connection in a way of that the cloud network gets part of it. And then you can easily work with Safeguard, Active Roles and Password Manager. In difference to that, the Identity Manager. The Identity Manager don't need that extension. It is just necessary to connect on the admin side, the specific installation, Therefore exists an admin workstation, cloud hosted, which could be connected easily directly using an RDP connection. Additionally to that exists the communication between the identity manager in the cloud and of course the on-prem target systems you want to connect to the identity manager. Therefore, you will install like always in the on-prem world just services. 
And these services will then communicate and talk to a REST-based service, which is cloud hosted and fully secured. With that, it is easy to connect the identity manager as well. And this is the reason why we have these two different communication types. And now what happens once you have submitted your details. First thing, of course, to know is that this is a manual process. That means you can't just expect that seconds after it is submitted, the environment was hosted. Reason for that is that our cloud hosting experts just prove your request, figure out if everything is available like it is needed. And once that is done, then they will just create an environment for you and send you a response email, which contains all the information you need to get your environment accessed. With the help of that, you can then easily start. And one last thing to talk about, and that is how to configure your parameters. First of all, basic parameters, as mentioned, gets just asked and configured in our web front. As an exception, some deep technical parameters, for example, like parameters according to the VPN connection you configured, are parameters could not be changed easily without using the connect. And because of that, these parameters needs to be configured together with our services experts. That means you just call support for these cloud-based environments for such kind of parameters, and you can configure these parameters then together with these support specialists. Great, and now just follow me watching the demo and figure out how it looks like for a safeguard on demand installation. Yes, and of course, everything looks better with the demo. And because of that, we will directly start to show you the whole process. I like to provision a safeguard on demand environment just to show what's possible. Therefore, I have to navigate uh, to cloud.oneidentity.com. Once I'm there, the first step to do is just to sign in. I click the sign in button to Starling, which is our cloud platform. And after a short while, I get asked where I am. Of course, I'm part of the European Union because I'm living near Berlin and Germany, as you have seen. And of course, there's the typical warning, which is necessary because of GDPR. I just accept the cookies and I enter my email address. And then with next, I just step to the next screen. And for people which are just doing that first time like I do, then you have as well uh, to add your first name and last name. For all people just have a Starling account, that's easy because they just have to enter their passwords. So my organization, it's one identity. My first name, of course, is Herbeck. My last name, of course, is Abele. I need to use a password, can create one. And I have to enter a phone number. My phone number, it's a phone number, of course, of Germany. I have to understand the policy, of course. And with that, my account is created and I can proceed. Seeing that specific screen, the next thing to see is that there is an email in your inbox. You just have to open the email to approve the account you already created. This is the email you will get. And of course, with pictures, they are a little bit nicer. And what you have to do here is that you have to complete your registration. And doing so, you are able to sign in. Therefore, we have to add the password, what we created together with the registration. And this takes us at least uh, to the Starling portal. And the next step is just to get our safeguard on demand. With the offer on that specific web page, the first thing to do is to scroll down a little bit. And the reason for is I need the products I want to select and therefore I have to Click here on that view on demand services button. Once I do that, you see the dark blue icons and the dark blue icons is what you are interested in. We just talked about that we want to provision a safeguard on demand. And so we just use the safeguard on demand and click the trial button. With clicking the trial button, the next thing is to say where I'm from. I'm from Germany, for example, I can as well select uh, my uh, state here. I'm in the province of Berlin. And I can as well select my industry. And I will just take here software, hardware and technology. 
So I confirm. And what I get is I get here this very dark blue icon, which is my safeguard on demand uh, offer. I have to configure that. Therefore, I just select uh, the dark blue icon. Starling took me directly to the next page. And on that very next page, I can start in a three step process with the registration and configuring the parameters. First, I am the technical contact, so I get automatically added to the list. And then there is some data to fill out. The first data, what I have to fill out is the location of the data center, which should typically, uh, from a location perspective, near to me. Therefore, I, for example, use Europe North or Europe West. It's up to me. I am more in the West, so I take Europe West. There are some further settings necessary. First of all, there is a distribution list for outages. That is the address where typically messages, notifications from the on-demand servers will appear, for example, if our service is out of order or if they want to tell me something important. So typically I will add there an email address that points to me and my colleagues which are running that planned safeguard system. So for example, I use the security admins uh, at oneidentity.com. Just to let you know, security admins at oneidentity.com, it's a virtual address uh, that is just founded by me right for that video and it did not exist. So you can directly delete them from your list of good email addresses. After that is done, and I don't want to add another email address, which is possible as well, I have to specify my uh, VPN uh, parameters. The first thing I have to do is to talk about my company. I'm working for one identity. So OI is nice. I can use as well whatever other stuff I like to. Then I should talk about my appliance model I use for VPN, uh, something that is uh, able to talk in IPsec what we need. That is, for example, strong span. Could be something other else as well, depending on the installation of VPN you have. And the next thing to enter is, of course, the local gateway. Of course, that is an email address directly from my mind without any sense behind, but it should a little bit show you what's to enter in such fields. So 6.8.8.7, that is a gateway somewhere on the outer side. And uh, it is something you have to know because it is part of your installation. Then I have to specify the local network. There it is necessary uh, to enter at the end the IP range. Therefore, I just, uh, for example, use a 10.0.0.0 network. And because I'm a huge organization, I use uh, the 8 just to determine a huge organization. What's in that field in your case? That depends on your network configuration. And this is information typically you know, or you can ask your network admin about it. Additionally, I'm able to enter more than one network if this is necessary. The one or the other companies are just working with more of these networks. And then with add CDR notation, uh, I'm able to just enter another network if I like to. Next thing is just to enter my local DNS server for name resolution. Therefore, I have just to enter a valid address. That is the DNS server in my local network. Again, a virtual address. That means I just take them from my brain instead of just configuring something that re in reality exists. And of course, I'm as well able to add more addresses. For example, if I have more than one DNS server available. Last but not least, I have to specify my remote network again up to now. That means the upper values was just to configure the local side of my network. Now I have to configure the remote side of my network. That means the network where my safeguard later on stands in. And therefore, I define just another IP range. For example, I use uh, 192 to 168 network. And because I don't expect too many machines, I will just use a standard subnet mask of 24. Here we are. 
Uh, it makes sense for our VPN connection. We want to configure, of course, to use IPsec. That's the reason why it is just turned on. And if we do so, then we have to specify the encryption for phase one and phase two of my specific network. And you can see out of a specific list of encryptions, I can just select some. For example, I take this encryption for phase one and I take, of course, then, for example, this encryption for phase two. And of course, all of these encryption parameters are as well according to your installation and will fit to your equipment. If all of these parameters are added, then I can just submit the details and with submit the details, I am now up for the next step. After submitting my data, the next thing uh, to do is to wait a little bit because now under the scenes, that means somewhere in our cloud center, our cloud administrators are doing some jobs and just provision an environment for you. You can follow that easily just looking here at the screen. So we start as you easily can see here with evaluating the technical information. If there are questions, it is possible that these admins start to talk to you. They do that typically by just chatting with you in the same window. So for example, here you can then see a specific notification and you can answer if this is necessary. And uh, once that whole thing is done, then uh, you will get a couple of emails. These emails typically show that you have purchased something and that uh, uh, the whole thing is provisioned for you. As you can easily see, this is the first email you get. That's the purchasing information. Of course, it is another product, so don't wonder. But at the end, it is exactly the same. It let you know that you purchased, in our case, for example, a safeguard. The second email is then much more of interest. This is the email that says everything is at the end provisioned and all tested. And you see now the connection information to you so uh, that you can start with. That is a little bit a mess. And because of that in the front end we saw, that means in the web, you will then see a response that looks like that. And that is much easier to read. Uh, you see all the entered information, the key information, and of course, IP addresses and such. Uh, that's just in that specific front end so that you can configure your side of things and with that easily connect via VPN. There is as well the IP address to your safeguard included and with the help of that you can directly open a browser front and connect to your safeguard installation. Great, that's it. And as you have seen, uh, since our review of the complete process it is quite straightforward and easy to use. With that, you should be able easily just to get your access to one of our on-demand products. One sentence just to close the complete video. When I told you this is cloud without compromise, I'm of course sure that it is. And it is of course a cloud hosted environment of our on-prem installations. That means all features available in our on-prem products should be available in the cloud offer as well except the one or the other feature. Reason for that is that for security reasons and because that is our cloud hosted offering, the one or the other configuration might not work or will be done by our cloud experts and is not open for you. But this is absolutely a minimum and you will nearly not lose one important feature. With that, have fun with services on demand and see you next time.